Talking with each other, we often communicate with a complex mixture of speaking and gesturing. People are able, without apparent effort, to produce rich and carefully coordinated multimedia presentations to describe their ideas. Gestures that occur with speech have many different functions, from directing the listener's attention with pointing gestures to the simple movements that help define the rhythm of a conversation. We are currently working on adding gestures to the human-machine interface. The specific focus of this video is our work on enabling the use of depictive gestures, those gestures used to describe the spatial and or temporal aspects of an action or scene. Depictive gestures do not have a well-defined standard form. They cannot be matched to a particular model and interpreted automatically. Instead, this class of gesture is created on the fly, depicting any spatial and temporal aspect the speaker decides to describe. We have developed a prototype system that allows a user to describe a scene through a free mixture of speech and depictive gestures. Create a room. Place a table here. A chair here. Add a mouse next to the table. Turn the mouse. And move it this way. Move the chair. On the table, place a teapot. Add a glass next to the teapot. Turn the teapot. Look at the room from here. Tilt the floor like this. The user is able to communicate complex spatial relations and actions through a simultaneous mixture of speech and gestures. This is not a command language interface in which hands serve as a redundant input mode for commands. This is not direct manipulation where the hands serve as a kind of three-dimensional mouse. This is a descriptive interface that takes advantage of people's abilities to communicate ideas through a free mixture of speech and depictive gestures. The prototype system is composed of four principal parts. A gesture module gathers the position and posture data for the user's hands from a pair of data gloves. It then analyzes and segments the stream into gestural features. This intermediate encoding of gestures focuses on the characterization of postures, positions, and orientation of the hands during significant static and dynamic periods. A speech module receives a stream of recognized words from a connected speech recognizer. 
The sequence of words is parsed to produce an expression of semantic frames. These frames encode the content and structure of the user's speech. An object base manages the objects and their appearance on the display. Object descriptions within the object base include part shapes, major axes, and spatial relations among objects and parts in the displayed scene. An interpretation module receives information from the other three modules. Again, gestures are not interpreted automatically based on a match to some standard template, but rather are assigned a meaning in the wider context of information from speech and the object base. A spatial representation is used to encode both the depictive gestures and the objects in the object base. This spatial representation allows us to map the relations and actions depicted in gestures to the objects in the displayed scene. For example, when the user said, move the chair like this, the gesture module analyzes the posture and movement of the hand. From speech, we determine that a movement operation is being requested for the chair. The intermediate encoding of the user's gesture can now be analyzed and mapped to the chair to fill in the details of that movement. The action is then carried out by sending the corresponding manipulation command to the object database. Later, the user defines the context for subsequent actions by saying, on the table. A mapping is established between the corners of the table depicted in gesture space and the corresponding corners in graphical space. Placing objects on the table can now be performed and interpreted in this spatial context. This prototype demonstrates an alternative approach to gestures at the human-computer interface, one in which the user does not learn an arbitrary set of signs, but rather allows the user to freely mix speech and gesture to describe the spatial and temporal aspects of a scene. Creating descriptions where speech and depictive gestures complement each other represents a skill we already possess, and a potentially powerful language for interacting with graphical domains.